Welcome back to our mini-series on meditation and self-development. Last week we've already taken a look at five sorts of what we call little demons which sometimes get in the way of our good intentions in self-development. This week we're going to be looking a little bit more at whether what we call moderation is really a good thing or not when it comes to our self-development. Because often we hear the words a moderation is good in all things. But what we find from our experience in self-development is that this is not always the case. So today we're going to be taking a look at exactly what is good in moderation and what uh, things for which moderation may not be quite so applicable. Once we are endowed with our vision of self-development, what we find is that the sort of things which we are really needing for our self-development other things which are going to improve the degree of virtue in our own lives. But in fact, moderation can be implied in many different things, even for meditation. If, for example, you drink too much water, then you may find that you're not able to sit for meditation for too long before you have to take a visit to the washroom. If you drink too little water, then you're not having enough refreshedness when you're meditating to be able to meditate well. So there's always a balance in everything. But exactly where the balance lies, well, this is the question of the art of meditation which we're trying to discover as a result of this part of the series. The problem with the sort of things we're talking about which concern moderation is not whether something is good or bad, but the extent of how much is appropriate for our meditation or for our self-development. The first group of things which I'd like to talk about are the things which you could say the more the merrier, which means that the more you do of them, the more beneficial it is for your practice. The first of these is the factor of compassion. This means that we have to control all the possibly unpleasant things which may come out of our body or out of our uh, intentions, which may be uh, the things which we say, the things that we appear to be to other people, the manners which we have, and not doing things to create the suspicion of others. If we are considerate of people in these ways, then what we find is that the more compassionate we are, the better it is for ourselves and the better it is for the world around us. The second thing for which the more the merrier is generosity. This may mean giving things to other people, but it may also mean giving things like our time, our forgiveness, our attention, teaching, advice, as long as it's out of compassion, then giving to other people is always something which is going to be more positive. The more generous you can afford to be, the better it is. The third thing which we should try to develop more and more is contentment with one's own spouse. Supposing we marry, that is, then we shouldn't have eyes for anyone else's spouse anymore. We shouldn't have eyes for anyone else, in fact. It's something which sounds easy, but in our modern world it seems to be becoming rarer and rarer. Often we say that we live in a throwaway society. In the olden days, if even a chair or a table was broken, people would go to the great uh, efforts to mend that thing. But in the present day, we find that even with our families, instead of making the effort to repair the broken relationships in our families, we tend to start afresh, which is rather wasteful in terms of human resources. And it's also bad news for our own uh, family stability as well. So this small factor of being content with one's own spouse is in fact very important. Again, the more the merrier. The fourth thing which we should uh, try to develop more and more is also the quality of truthfulness or sincerity. It doesn't mean that you must tell other people everything you're thinking, but it means that the things that we do do and the things that we do say, we ought to be doing to the fullest of our ability. They ought to be aligned with the things that we really believe in in our lives. So if we can be sincere and true in everything which we do, then this is something for which the more the merrier. Last but not least is that we should be mindful. Anything which undermines our ability to be mindful or to have a good conscience about the things we are doing is something uh, which we uh, ought to avoid completely. We need to be more mindful if we are going to be a good meditator. And this is something which is not, again, a question of moderation. It's something which we should be trying to develop to the full. So for these five uh, forms of behavior, it's not a question of moderation, but it's something which we ought to be cultivating 
to the greatest of our ability. It's said that there are three sorts of approaches to doing such good deeds like this. The sort of difficulties which we tend to come across when we try to do these sort of good deeds to the full. Some people, they n know what is good to do in their lives, but they lack the morale to do it. And if this is the case, then sometimes we need to associate more with the sort of people who can give us the encouragement to fulfill all the good deeds which we would like to do in our lives. There are some people who do have the morale to do the good deeds, but they don't have the opportunity to do them. Perhaps they have to work too hard and they're not in an environment which allows them to do as many good deeds as they would like. In such a case, then you do need to divide up your time more uh, strictly in order to give yourself the chance to pursue your good deeds at least uh, in an uncompromised way uh, more often uh, than before. And if you have no other obstacles, like you have the encouragement and you have also the opportunity, the surroundings which allow you to do the good deeds, then you really should take that opportunity to do the good deeds to the full. So these are all examples of things which it's not a question of moderation for, but things which you should do to the full. So when we're talking about moderation, what are we really talking about? Well, this is rather like uh, many of the things which we use as the basic necessities in our lives. For our own survival, we depend on as many as four different things. We depend upon our food, clothing, shelter, and also medicine in times of uh, illness. These are things which, when we're talking about moderation, it's very important to consider. For example, the small factor of food is something which we tend to underestimate, uh, especially in the Western world where obesity is uh, a disease which is uh, becoming rife in every country. Just being able to know the right amount of food to eat is often a big challenge for many people. According to our Buddhist uh, technology, we say that to know exactly the right amount of food to eat, you should stop eating exactly four mouthfuls before you know you're going to get full of food. Why should that be? Because when you're eating, what you find is that there are another four mouthfuls of food which are already on their way down your throat as you are eating. So if you stop eating four mouthfuls before you're completely full, then that will be just the right amount of food to eat. But if you stop eating when you are already feeling full, then that extra four mouthfuls is already going to overfill you. So knowing moderation from the point of view of food will help you to know moderation in many other aspects of your life as well. What about moderation in terms of clothing? Some people have a different set of clothes for every day of the week. Some people ne never wear the same set of clothes twice. Well, it's said that if you want to know moderation in the clothes which you wear, then you should try to have sets of clothes which you can use on many different occasions. For example, a set of clothes which you can wear to a wedding and a funeral and to go to work in is better than having a separate set of clothes for each one of these at different occasions. What do we mean by moderation when it comes to shelter? Some people like to have an extravagant house with many rooms, but if you ask if you enjoy doing the cleaning for the whole of the house, then you probably get the right answer for yourself that uh, knowing moderation and the amount of space which you really need is something which is going to help to free up your time to do more good deeds in your life. If you have a huge house, then the size of your mortgage will also be huge. You may find that you die before you've paid off all of your mortgage this lifetime round, and leave the debts for your, your children or your grandchildren to pay off for you. And how about moderation in terms of medicine? There are some people, of course, who will not see a doctor in their own country. They have to go to Switzerland to see a doctor. On the other hand, there are those who never admit that they're ill until they get so ill that they are too uh, serious to be cured anymore. So somewhere in between is the question of moderation in terms of the medicine which we use. These four requisites food, clothing, shelter, and medicine are things for which the word moderation are very important. And if we can apply them properly in these four simple things, then it's going to be much easier for us to know moderation when it comes to more complex things. But there are things for which the principle of moderation really does not apply. And this can sometimes depend on our own personal weaknesses at any particular time. In Thailand, we have the expression that if you have a cut in your hand, then you cannot afford to handle poisons. Normally, if you pick up something like bleach in your hand, then it's not a particularly harmful substance because it cannot 
be absorbed into your own body. But at any time where you have a cut in your hand, then it may be something very dangerous for you to pick up in your hand because it will be absorbed directly into your body. In the same way, sometimes if we have particular weaknesses, then it may be advisable to avoid things which normally are no trouble for us. For example, normally you may be a very good-natured person. You'll be able to put up with annoying circumstances. But supposing one day you feel ill, you feel irritable because of that, if you meet up with the same circumstances, often you may find that it will upset you uh, because you are caught off your guard by your uh, sickness. So if you know that you are suffering from a particular weakness, then sometimes it's better to withdraw from the things which you may otherwise uh, cause you to be upset or to lose your vision which you need for your self-development. These are known as the things which are only good up to the point of your own limit. Another scenario where moderation doesn't apply are for things which are particularly dangerous, things which are often addictive and for which even a small amount of such substances or behaviors can make a big uh, harmful difference to your life. Often we tend to overlook small things, but in some cases small things can be very important. You can try uh, to understand this better if you look at the work of psychologists or historians or even detectives. Sometimes even small things can be telltale things which can make a big difference to the interpretation of a situation. Also for us, in certain cases, the things that we consume or the things which we do can be things which are very dangerous if uh, they are in certain categories. These are applying for things like, for example, alcohol, where it's a common preconception that uh, if you're not drunk, then it's okay to drink a little alcohol. I've even heard it said that uh, it's okay to drink alcohol as long as you don't get violent. But in fact, that's not uh, entirely the case. It's an oversimplification to think that there's no damage coming from alcohol until you start to become aggressive about it. In fact, the damage is already done to what we mentioned earlier, and that is our mindfulness, even from the time we start to think of drinking the alcohol in the first place. So some categories of things, especially if they are addictive, things like drink, uh, drugs, even laziness, or getting so preoccupied with things like entertainment or gambling that we forget to do our work anymore, these are things which we cannot afford to overlook. And they are things which are not good in moderation. They are not good at all, in fact. And they are things which we shouldn't touch with a barge pole. The things which we ought to distance ourselves from as much as possible and distance ourselves even from the people who are involved with them. There are some things which really they are not, on the face of it, uh, common sense, but which are sometimes so dangerous that we cannot afford to be mixed up with them at all. Think, for example, of the uh, example of a child which is playing around with an electricity socket. Sometimes we might think that it's good for the child to learn from its own experiences. Maybe they will get a, a new bit of knowledge if they are electrocuted. But in fact, this doesn't uh, add up because if the child is harmed by electrocution, then they're not going to have any chance to learn anything anymore. So sometimes we need to be cruel in order to be kind. We need to tell off the child or even punish them in a way they're going to remember before they're going to be able to learn about the real nature of the danger of an electricity socket. So some things uh, with the roads of ruin, as I just mentioned, are rather like uh, electrocution from electricity socket. We cannot afford to try it and decide for ourselves later because they undermine our whole ability to make the decision in the first place. So when we come to self-development, yes, moderation is an interesting principle. It's a principle which can be applied to many things which are neither good nor bad, which we have in our lives. But as self-developers, we need to have the awareness there are some things which are much better than we can afford just to do in moderation. Also, uh, things which are so dangerous that we cannot afford to do them at all. They're not good in moderation, but in fact they are very dangerous even in moderation. So today, very briefly, we have taken a look at what we actually mean by moderation in the context of self-development. Next time, we're going to be look a, looking a little bit more at the strategies for decision-making which we need to use so that we don't succumb to the action of the defilements in our minds when we come to trying to make fair decisions. So in the meantime, I'd like to encourage you, as usual, to keep up with your daily meditation and try to apply some of this knowledge about moderation in your everyday life as well. So all things being equal, I'll see you again next week.